Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant Software. I'm going to start off this quick tip by showing you the end results of this project uh, because I have to discuss a few technical things next and I want to keep you interested in watching. Ooh, shiny. So last night I attended a really great meeting of After Effects New York with a presentation by some folks from a creative design agency called Imaginary Forces. In that presentation, designer and visual effects artist Jeremy Cox talked about how he and his team used trap code form to create a lot of the machine vision in Terminator Salvation. You can see some video of their work at the video gallery on redgiantsoftware.com. They were simulating the look of point cloud data by using depth mats to drive trap code form. I know that sounds really complicated as a concept, but it's actually fairly simple, to, well, depending on what you're trying to do. A point cloud is a set of vertices or dots in a three-dimensional coordinate system that represent the surface of an object. So in this case, for example, taking a look at this Jeep, we can see that these dots represent points all over the Jeep in 3D space. And we go a little further in the video, and they've got these dots that are representing the face in 3D space. So it's kind of pushed out, and these dots represent specific points. So you know, it seems complicated. It's actually a really cool effect, and it's not that hard to do. Uh, it really hinges on something called a depth mat. And a depth mat is a grayscale image that represents distance of 3D objects from the camera. Objects closer to the camera are usually lighter, and objects further away are usually darker. Do a search on Google for Z-Depth Renders, and you'll find some really cool images to work with after we cover the material in this tutorial. We can use the levels of luminance or brightness to push and pull trap code form particles away from the camera as I've done here in this uh, After Effects project I'm just going to bring up right now. And uh, this is uh, something that I rendered years ago in 3D. And take a look around, you know, using the Z-Depth render, I'm able to make this image a really nice cool looking 3D uh, simulation. The original image looked like this. And then I also had a Z-depth render that looked like this. So the white parts are closer and the dark parts are further away. And again, you end up with something that's really, you know, when you use trap code form, uh, you end up with something that looks really, really cool. But I'm not going to cover this level of detail. The, the work that was done by Imaginary Forces involved a bunch of 3D modeling and 3D camera tracking, and it was really mind-blowing stuff. But I'm going to keep it simple and going to work only in After Effects and Maybe if we send some love his way, we can convince Jeremy to do a full tutorial for Red Giant TV. I don't know if you're watching this, Jeremy, but we're sending our love your way. Okay, so here I am in a composition that's uh, 640 by 360, and I've got a 3D camera in here, nothing special, just a standard 35mm, and I'm going to create a new composition, and I'll call this one Depth Map, and I will set the width to 800 and the height to 800, and I'm going to click on OK. And then I'll create, let me just pull back here, create a new solid. And uh, it'll be the whole size of the composition. And I don't need to name anything special. I'll click OK. And I'll choose Effect, Noise and Grain. And we'll go with Fractal Noise, one of my favorite effects in After Effects. So let's uh, set the noise type to block to create this blocky look. I'm going to bring the complexity down to just to 2. So we'll keep it really really simple. And uh, these are pretty small. I want to create bigger blocks. So I'm going to go to the transform settings and I'll set the scale to 185 or so. Yeah, it looks good. 185, pull back. Yeah, looking good. Okay, we're going to use this to be the push our pixels up and down. The lighter pixels will push them up and the darker ones down or maybe vice versa depending on how we rotate things. But pretty much that's the plan. So with a DOF map, I see I've made a mistake there. Let me just fix that. We'll name this to Depth Map. And I'll jump into my original composition. And I'll take the Depth Map comp and I'll drop it in here. And I don't need to see it. Uh, it can be invisible because we're going to be using Trap Code Form. And Trap Code Form is going to be accessing this image, but we don't need to actually have it be uh, visible in the composition. So I'll turn it off. And I'll choose Layer, New, Solid. Sorry, my mouse is a little stuck there. There we go. Layer new solid, and uh, I'll make it the comp size. We'll call it form, and I'll click OK. And then I'll choose effect, trap code, and form. And uh, let's make some changes here. So let's go into the base form properties, and I'll set the size in X to 800, and the size in Y 
to 800 as well. And that's just to cover the same size as my depth map. You don't have to do that. You can be 400 by 400. You can do really whatever you want, um, even numbers that are not the same number. I'm just trying to work with the same square shape at the same square size, but that's totally up to you. I'll set the particles in X to 200 and the particles in Y to 200. And just so you can uh, see what's going on here, there are three layers right now, particles in Z, right? So you can see there's actually three layers there. I'm going to set the particles in Z for now anyway to 1, just so it's easier to work with. Okay, with that done, um, I'm also just going to do one last thing, which is to rotate the uh, rotate this in space, we'll rotate on the x-axis, and let me rotate it 90 degrees. So now it just basically looks like a line. So now let's use some displacement, and we're going to use our depth map to do that. So let's go into uh, layer maps, and for displacement, I'll set functionality from RGB to XYZ to individual XYZ. So that's going to use, uh, we can just tell it to push it up in Z space, or in its Z space, because this is actually going to be Y, but we're going to set a uh, layer for Z to depth map and just make sure that map over X and Y are selected so that it's actually mapping over the X, Y coordinates of the part of the layer. Now, as we, uh, as we push the strength up, you can see it creates this nice 3D looking world. Let me just set this to 200 and just so you can see what's going on. So we've got this really cool looking sort of 3D environment. Let me just pull back here a bit. All right. So we've got a really cool looking 3D sort of space with all these little pieces that are there. But I want to create the look of sort of like buildings and there's nothing on the sides to show the walls. So I need to do just jump back into my depth map and uh, make a couple, a small alteration actually. I'll jump in there and with my uh, solid selected with the fractal noise, I'll choose effect Blur and Sharpen, and we'll go with uh, Fast Blur. And I'll set this to a blurriness of 5, and uh, make sure to repeat the edge pixels. And what this does is it sort of blurs the edges so that it'll create just the slightest bit of a transition between these two colors, let's say. And so it creates some more depth, and it can use it. Take a look back here, and now it's not very, it's not full like it was before, but now you can actually see that there are, on the sides, there's a little more. So if I wanted to really... Uh, have more stuff on the sides. I could really blur the heck out of this thing. Let's say I go all the way up to 34, 35, right? And then I jump back in here. Now you've got something that looks a little more terrain-like, um, which is pretty cool, but uh, not what I'm going for in this case. So I'm going to undo that and get it back to where we were. So we got rid of that more of that blur. So here we go. We have some basic points to simulate the sides of what could be buildings. You know, you could go a little blurrier if you if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to leave it at this. Okay, it's looking pretty cool, but I would like to add a little bit more of a machine-like effect, maybe something that separates the red, green, and blues. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my particles in Z, and I'll set this to 3. So that creates three, basically three levels of of the exact same thing, of that exact same 3D uh, render from form. And right now they're being separated by about 200 pixels each. If I were to set my size in Z to much higher, you can see that we've up or down, like it separates them more. I'm going to set the size in Z to, let's try 10. Okay, we get this blurry look. And I want it to sort of separate out the colors a little bit. So we'll get a little red, green, blue action going on. Let me go into my quick maps here in trap code form. And I'll set my map opacity and color over, let's try Z, right? And there we go. What's doing is our color map is actually red to yellow to green to cyan to blue, but it's basically creating three, and so the three of them come out to the red, the green, and the blue. And uh, if we rotate around now, we got something that looks pretty cool. It's really nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, that said, doesn't mean we shouldn't try something different. So I'm going to jump into my depth map comp, and I'm going to make some changes to this. I want to create something that's a little more like the city. Uh, so let me turn off that fast blur. And, you know, a city's got streets. So let's add in some streets or some space, basically, where there won't be buildings. So let me just...
do something like this and I'll set the mask to subtract and uh, alright so I'm gonna duplicate this mask and move it over to about here maybe do another one they don't have to be the same distance apart because in real life in the city at least where I live uh, the streets and the avenues are not all the same size so one more just to get it in there and uh, with that done I'll select all these masks I'm gonna hit control D or command D to duplicate them move them up here change their color to red just so I have something to work with uh, I can see it's easier to tell them apart and um, and I'll double click on one with all of them selected it ends up making it uh, that they're all selected and I can rot rotate all of them and I'll click enter to confirm it so this is what I've got now looks pretty cool it's got a grid like a city and we've got these different bumps to simulate different either buildings or different uh, sizes of things and if we uh, turn our fast blur back on at this point I can jump in here and I can see that I've got something that looks a lot more like a city although I'm not really a fan of that street it's very distracting to, to the rest of it to have so much uh, so many concentrated particles so I'm gonna get rid of that street level make it disappear and I'll select the form layer and I will go down into to my layer maps and under color and alpha I'll tell it that it should again use our depth map and remember our depth map it's got uh, the alpha channel is right now here you can see um, it's empty in those areas so we're going to use that just jumping back here we're using the the depth map here we're saying to use the layer and for functionality let's tell it to grab the alpha from the alpha and to map it over the X and Y of the original form layer and so now what we've got is something that looks a lot more like a city and you can make these blocks bigger if you want to simulate uh, more space between them but I think it's looking pretty cool if you do want a street but you don't want it to be quite as uh, visible as it was before what we can do is let me create a new solid layer here and we'll make it a nice dark layer right uh, this almost black color and I'll click on OK and I'll move this to behind the layer and let me set its opacity maybe to 30 percent let's see what we get here you can sort of see something now right um, you can sort of see the street there but it's very minimal and you can always play with that opacity and in fact you know you might want to go back and change the size of the of the streets make them bigger to separate things out even a little more but I think this looks really cool you know looks really nice like a really cool computer representation of a city that you can probably use in a lot of your work if you're doing anything that's got any kind of computer models or anything like that anyway if you enjoyed that and you'd like to learn more about trap code form you should go check out redgianttv.com where you can find a ton of great tutorials and there's several that cover trap code form. I'll just mention a few here. We've got episode 30 which was creating a 3D motion graphics logo by Carl Larson. Another really cool one by Tim Clapham where he did some text and some cool transitions with trap code form. And then also uh, one of my favorites, a two-parter by Mal Tannen where he made this uh, face in 3D just by a uh, video video of a guy not like a 3d model or anything and he used that to create this 3d face with trap code form definitely worth a watch and finally I just want to mention that if uh, if you want some free presets for trap code form or any of your trap code or magic bullet products you should check out redgiantpeople.com which is uh, another one of our websites and it's full of great stuff uh, there's hundreds of free presets there's a bunch of trap code form ones that are free and uh, definitely worth uh, checking out Anyway, once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for Red Giant Software. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.